Today in the Physics Fun House, we are performing the classic thin lens experiment where we attempt to measure the focal length of a lens by forming different images with it. In order to do this, we must have a converging lens, that is a lens that is thicker in the middle than it is on the edges. And one of the questions that you need to be able to answer today is why does it have to be a converging lens? So come with me and let's investigate lenses. So to form this lab, obviously we're going to need a lens. So here's our lens. And it needs to be a converging lens. And again, one of the questions you're, be, you're expected to be able to answer is why does it have to be a converging lens? We want to create a real image because we can't measure distances to virtual image. And so we're going to need some sort of screen, like a whiteboard just kind of clamped to a box. And then we need a meter stick because we want to measure distances. And so the, the way that this is kind of set up is you got a little holder for your lens and your lens just kind of goes on there. And then let's get the meter side. There's a little triangle pointer thing at the bottom, which tells us exactly where on the meter stick the lens is. And so that triangle pointer at the bottom will tell us exactly where on the meter stick our image is, and then it's most convenient to have our screen be at zero. So I don't have to do too much math while we're doing this today. Now in addition to a lens and a screen to see the image, we need something that actually creates the image. We need an object to look at. So I could go, hey, look at my hand over there on the screen but you're probably not likely gonna see my hand on the screen because there's a lot more light other than the light coming from my hand hitting the screen. And so what we need is some sort of lighted source, like some sort of uh, source that actually emits its own light. And so you can do this with a candle, you can do this with a flashlight, um, if you can kind of sort of see the filament. So this kind of flashlight is kind of handy because it's got a bunch of individual bulbs. Um, but that's not going to illustrate one important feature of this. And so what I'm going to use today is just a little light bulb. And this little light bulb holder also has a pointer, which tells me where on the meter stick it is. And then on the front of that light bulb is printed an R. Um, you could print a different letter if you like. I'm not sure why these were R. They were here when I got here. Um, but it's important that it's a letter or some other figure that you can clearly tell the symmetry of, like if it's right side up or upside down, things like that. So um, that source is going to be lighted, and so the light from the source hopefully will show up on the screen against any ambient light. The last thing we're gonna do is turn the lights off so that we can reduce the amount of ambient light. So let's go turn the lights off real quick and see if we can see an image of that R on the screen over there. Okay, so I've got the lights turned off in the classroom and my light bulb with my little R on it is lit and glowing. And it's the only light source really in the room. All the other lights are turned off. And so that reflection on the whiteboard um, above our lens, like over in this area, that's just the light bulb hitting the whiteboard. And so that we can ignore, that's just a reflection. Here is the actual image created on the screen for my lens. And so you can see the outline of the lens itself. You can see the outline of the lens holder. And there in the center is our image. We kind of get closer to it. Uh, you, you can't really see anything because my image isn't in focus yet. The image is only going to show up nice and clear and focused when the image distance, which is the distance from the lens to the screen, and the object distance, which is the distance from the lens to the object, the light bulb, um, match up with the equation 1 over f equals 1 over so plus 1 over si. And so our job now is to move the lens until we get the image on the screen to be focused and clear. So with my lens and that little lens holder on the meter stick, this is going to be real simple. All I've got to do is slide this forwards and backwards, observe the screen, and then stop it when the image on the screen is nice, clear, and in focus. So sliding it back, further, 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 almost closer, right there. There's our image on the screen. Let's get in closer, closer, closer. So now on our screen, you should clearly see the R 
that was printed on the light bulb. So if you look closely at the image on the screen, you should notice that it is inverted. Kind of doesn't look like an R at first until you realize that this is the stray part, this is the curvy part, and this is the part that goes down to the bottom. And so that image is inverted because it appears upside down on the screen. So our next move now is to measure the image distance and the object distance. And for that, it might be helpful to turn the lights on. So let's turn the lights on and measure the image distance and the object distance. So here's our long shot of our experimental setup. So we're looking at this from the side. Right here, um, this is our lens. And so we can clearly see where on the meter stick the lens is. Here's our light bulb. And I've turned it off just so that it doesn't interfere with what we're looking at. And then over here on the left side, this over here is our screen. So the distance between the screen, which is where the image is, and the lens, which is right here, so this distance right here, is our image distance. And so since the screen is at zero, our lens is at 60, that's getting close to look at this. 68.4 68.4 centimeters um, the image distance is just 68.4 centimeters so that's this distance right here this distance from the lens to the light bulb the light bulb is our object this is our object distance right here so the light bulb is at 90 point 90.3 centimeters. So if we subtract 68.4 from 90.3, that would give us our object distance right here. And so our object distance is SO, our image distance is SI. Now we're going to be good scientists today, and we're not just going to do one set of object distance versus an image distance. We're going to do a whole bunch of them. And so we can do one more without having to move the light bulb. And then after we do that, then we can start moving the light bulb to different positions and getting different image distances. So let me turn the lights back off and show you how to get another image without moving the light bulb just by moving the lens. Okay, so here we're back in the dark, and you can still see the image of the R clearly on the screen. I haven't moved anything. Um, just turn the lights off is all I've done. So what I'm going to do next is move the lens closer to the whiteboard until I get a second image formed on the whiteboard. And so let me get you guys in real close here, so hopefully y'all can see it too. Okay, so y'all are in nice and close now. I'm going to start sliding the lens forward. So as I slide the lens forward, you'll notice that the image starts to change. It's out of focus. And as I slide it forward, I start to get real tiny images. And now I got a real tiny image that is in focus. So my teeny tiny little image in there, that, that's actually in focus and you can see the R. I don't know if y'all can see it. Let's try zooming in. So you can see that teeny tiny little upside down R there in the center of the light bulb. I'll take a still shot as well um, Let me try to put it in the video. And so there is our second point. Let me show you where the lens is here. That lens is like almost right next to the whiteboard. And so that's our second point where we can get a good, clean, clear image. And then same thing, the image from the, the distance rather. From the lens to the whiteboard is the image distance. The distance from the lens all the way back over here to the light bulb, that is the object distance. So to get different sets of image distance and object distances, we have to move the object closer to the screen. And so I've got this set back up at the first image, the bigger of the two. Um, so you should see over there on the screen a big inverted R again. Um, I'm going to leave the lens where it is, and I'm going to slide the light bulb to a new location. And so when you actually do this in the lab, um, it's kind of helpful to put the light bulb at like even intervals of 10, like 90, 80. So since, it was, since it was about at 90, I'm going to scooch it up to about 80. And so what I want you to notice is that as I move the light bulb, the image on the screen is going to start to change. So notice that now it's very clearly out of focus. <laughs> Get it? So I'm going to scooch this forward until it's at about 80 centimeters, like right there. And you'll notice over there on the screen, 
that you've got just blurriness again. All right, so I'm going to start to slide the lens forward again now until we get a nice clear image again. And right about there. So now we have again a clear image. Oh, power cord. So you should see that nice clear inverted R right there. Um, and so we have a new set of object distance. So there's our new object distance and image distance. And so we can get two image distances for this position of the light bulb and then keep changing the position of the light bulb until we have a nice big data set. Um, one thing that you should be aware of is that once you get the light bulb to be inside the focal length of the lens, then you're never going to see a image on the screen again. So there's going to become a point where there's just not enough room for the light bulb to create a real image on that screen. And so when that happens, then you can't scooch it forwards anymore. So let me real quick kind of show you what that might look like. Let's slide this way forwards. Let's slide this way forwards. So now the light bulb is like 20 centimeters or so from the screen and there won't be a position where I can get an image to focus on the screen. That happens when this distance here is inside the focal length of the lens. So there'll become a time when you can't get a real image to show up on the screen anymore and at that point you can't like keep scooching the light bulb closer to the screen. You can scooch it further away, scooch as far back as you want, but there's a limit to how close you can scooch the light bulb towards the screen. All right, so your job now is to collect a bunch of object distances versus image distances and figure out how to graph that data so that you get a nice straight line that can somehow be used to find the focal length of your lens. And hopefully by now you can also answer the question, why can't we do this lab with a diverging lens? So let me know the answer. Let me know what you get for the focal length of the lens and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta.